Hey everyone, welcome to the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam practice question series and in today's episode we are going to take and talk about some very important concepts such as AWS regions, availability zones and edge locations. And as always I will give you loads of AWS documentation to support the answer and also you can do some self study and validate the answer as well. And as a bonus, I will also tell you about one AWS service that you can use to become very cost efficient and save huge amount of money. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive in into the very first question for today. So let's begin the part 45 with question number 301. Already three centuries of the questions are done. Let's read this question. It says which of the following identity and access management entities is associated with an access key ID and secret keys when using AWS command line interface or also known as AWS CLI. Your options are IAM group. Option B, I am user. Option C, I am role. And option D, I am policy. The correct answer for the same is option B, I am user. Now we also talked about I am in the previous episode, my friends. We took some questions and I explained the concept this in a little bit more detail. So please check out previous uh, part 44 as well. But as far as this question is concerned, I can tell you that in the context of the identity and access management in uh, Amazon AWS, the IAM entity associated with the access key uh, or access key ID and the secret access key is the user. That is why the correct option is this one. And the Amazon or AWS CLI, it really interacts with the AWS services using the IAM user. And these users are given access key IDs and secret access keys to securely sign in programmatic requests to the AWS and also to generate the access key ID and the secret access key. You can create an IAM user in your AWS account and it's really important to note that these keys are used uh, for programming purposes for example CLI, SDK or, or maybe doing the direct HTTP call and they are not signing into the AWS management console. So very important few points here and there please uh, you know watch this uh, one or two minutes once again and you will get more understanding on how this is connected IAM user to the AWS identity and access management. And in case my friends you are new to the world of cloud computing and want to know what are the highest paying cloud computing jobs in the year 2025 and how to prepare for them. What are the certifications you need whether you are a beginner, intermediate or advanced. What is the preparation that you need to do whether you love the programming or not then please watch these two videos where I have given each and every detail for 22 job roles and not just that I have evaluated each of the job profile on multiple critical parameters and also given you all the knowledge in these videos for you to get prepared for these job profiles. Let's move on to the next question question number 302 that says what approach to transcoding a large number of individual video files adheres to the AWS architecture principles and your options are option A using many instances in parallel option B using a single large instance during off peak hours and then we have option C using dedicated hardware and option D using a large GPU instance type. So what is the correct answer? Well it is option A using many instances in parallel. And why this is so because it's really beneficial to approach to the transcoding of a large number of uh, individual video files um, using the parallel architecture and this approach is actually commonly known as horizontal scaling. Uh, so it allows for the transcoding process to be distributed across the multiple instances simultaneously and this really increases the efficiency and speed of the task and of course you can understand about the AWS vertical or horizontal scaling in this documentation so please go ahead and read what is vertical scaling and what is horizontal scaling both are given in this documentation and actually I have taken few very interesting question on the vertical scaling horizontal scaling how they actually work I have detailed out the entire concept in the previous episodes so please watch those episodes and you will understand everything on these on this concept but for now let's jump on to the next question question number 303 that says a company is considering 
using AWS for a self-hosted database that requires a nightly shutdown for the maintenance and cost saving purposes. Which service should the company use? Your options are Amazon Redshift, option B Amazon DynamoDB, option C Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud with Amazon EC2 instance store and option D Amazon EC2 with Amazon Elastic Block Store, also known as Amazon EBS. And it's a rather tricky question. A lot of related information is given, but let me give you the correct answer. That is option D, Amazon EC2 with Amazon Elastic Block Store, EBS, Amazon EBS. And you can read all about what is Amazon Elastic Block Store on this documentation. But let me give you a little bit summary here. So Amazon EC2, with Amazon uh, EBS, which is the correct answer that we chose. It really allows you to easily start and stop instances, which is ideal for the nightly shutdowns as asked in the question as well. And the EBS volumes persist independently from running life of the EC2 instances. So your data, it actually remains intact even when the instance is stopped. So that is the beauty of using the Amazon EC2 with the Amazon Elastic block store. Now I can give you one liner understanding of all the other services as well. Basically the Redshift, Amazon Redshift and Amazon DynamoDB, they are the managed services designed for continuous operations and they actually do not support regular shutdowns as part of their typical use cases. Then coming to the this one, Amazon EC2 with Amazon Instance Store. This is also not suitable because the instance store volumes, they are ephemeral and the data is lost when the instance is stopped and by ephemeral we mean that you know it's more like your cache memory if the machine is stopped all the information and data on your cache uh, machine or your ram is gone that is what the concept of ephemeral means and with that let's move on to another very interesting question 304 it says under the aws shared responsibility model which of the following activities are customers responsibility choose to once again customer responsibility in the previous episodes we have talked both about the customer responsibility aws responsibility so always be very careful reading whose responsibility question is talking about and what are the options given option a patching operating system components for amazon relational database server option b encrypting data on the client side option c training the data center staff option d configuring network access control list option e maintaining environmental controls within a data center so what are the correct options well the first one is option b encrypting data on the client side that of course is your responsibility as the customer and the second correct option is option d configuring network access control list and just to give you more understanding maybe the question or the options changes i will tell you that the aws actually manages the amazon rds along with the environmental controls and the staffing training that we can see in the option c that is actually managed by the aws itself and the same is also true for the last option maintaining environmental control within the data center all of these the other option a c and e are maintained by aws that is why not the correct answer for this question moving on with the next very interesting question you will understand you know how the uh, geography or the AWS geography is laid out. Let's read the question. Question number 305 that says, which of the following is the correct relationship between regions, availability zones and edge locations? Please read out all these concepts, region, availability zone, edge locations. There will be multiple questions on these. Please understand these concepts. But for now, let's check out the options given. First one is data centers contain region. Option B, region contain availability zones. Option C, availability zones contain edge location. And option D, edge location contains the regions. And this one, my friends, I really want you people to answer. Pause the video and give your answer in the comment section and then come back and check the answer. It's a core concept for the AWS cloud computing. In fact, I would like to say that not just AWS, it's actually the core concept for all the cloud computing. So a must understand concept. For now, let me tell you the correct answer. That is option B, regions contain availability zones. And here, my friends, you can understand all about the regions and the availability zones. What are the different geographies? You have North America, South America, Europe, Middle East, Africa, and a lot more. Then you can also understand 
how these geographies work, what are the benefits of regions, availability zones, services that are offered in all these regions and availability zones. You can also understand the local zones, AWS wavelength, outposts, because they can be questions on various these services as well. And yes, my friends, in the year 2025, I'm going to launch multiple exciting videos on what are the most critical services and the concepts in Amazon AWS and Microsoft Azure. And not just that, I'm going to launch a Microsoft Zero to Hero series where you will be able to understand all the critical Microsoft Azure concepts. There will be loads of practical lab and you will understand everything about Microsoft Azure. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.